everyone to Launch Title Madness. This mini-series has been a long time in the making. You, the viewer, selected the participants, and we here at Gaming Off The Grid will take it from here. In the first matchup of Launch Title Madness, we see Daytona USA from the Sega Saturn against Nintendo Land from the Wii U. And in the second matchup, we see Twilight Princess from the good old Nintendo Wii against Tekken Tag from the PlayStation 2. Fasten your seatbelts, ladies and gents. Things are about to get a little bit crazy. Yeah, things are about to get a little bit rowdy. It's gonna be full on, unfiltered madness, yeah. Need a little excitement? Step into a Slim Jim, oh yeah. And Madness, it is going to be. It is time for a mini series entitled Launch Title Madness. This is the second season of yes. this type of a mini series. In 2020, we did Console Madness. Console Madness, which was badass because we pitted all the consoles together. Yeah. And then the PS2 became victorious. Yeah. And the, all the consoles. And viewers were like, we want more. We want more. So here we are. The viewers selected, if you guys follow the channel on our community tab, everybody got a vote on their favorite two launch titles from every console that we own yes. in our collection. But that's where we take it. So all the entries are voted on by you and we're gonna pit them together randomly. Yeah, random, random seeds. Brackets, random seeds. And we're gonna determine what is the greatest launch title of all time, at least according to us. So today's episode is kind of fun because you get matchups from various consoles, various generations. Yes. And the first matchup, Daytona vs. Nintendo Land. Let's oh take a look God. at these contenders. In 1995, when Sega launched the Sega Saturn, it was a no-brainer to include one of the highest grossing arcade games of all time in its launch title library. And that launch title was Daytona USA. Gentlemen, start your engine. For the first time ever, Sega was able to achieve near perfect arcade ports on the home console. Now the home console version of Daytona USA differs a little bit in the fact that it removed two player. Not the greatest move for Sega, but the game was a marvel for the time and paved the way for many racing games to come. The game also included things that its arcade counterpart did not include, Saturn mode, which adds more cars for players to select and removes the timer from the game. At the time of release, the game was critically acclaimed and did receive ports on later consoles, kind of cementing its legacy as a pretty substantial launch title. In 2012, Nintendo launched the Wii U and with it, Nintendo Land. Nintendo Land essentially served as a tech demo for the Wii U, showing off the abilities of the tablet and what the console can offer. It includes 12 minigames based on Nintendo's IPs. Nintendo Land is one to five players and sold 5.2 million copies, making it the fifth highest selling Wii U game. The game got positive reviews and IGN said, and I quote, Wii Sports has met its match. All right, the final verdict, Daytona vs. Nintendo Land. I mean, this isn't really a humdinger of a matchup by any means. Yeah, what, are the, what a hit. legendary start to this match. Yeah, but I do like both these games yeah, a lot. Yeah, they're both really fun. Daytona is a very serviceable racing game. I mean, what are your thoughts when you look okay, at these two games? So, coming into Launch Title Madness, I gotta keep in mind that these are launch titles, so I gotta be in the perspective of, of when this game came out, how did it affect the launch of a console yeah, yeah because these were the selling points of consoles so let's look at daytona it's a really fun racing game on the saturn i think that would that was a badass launch title yeah but then you look at nintendo land it uses the gamepad perfectly it brings people together it's a it's great a party, party game. game it's it, kind of a tech demo for it, what the it, whole console is going to be shows you what the wii u is so if you look at that and then you look at how they still hold up which isn't fair because nintendo land's new and daytona's old and how they still play and what's fun. I think the winner of all that discussion 
Nintendo Land. Yeah. I think it has to be. I, I, I would have to agree. And what's interesting about this matchup is we've got two uh, underperforming consoles from a, yes. a market perspective as far as install base. But I think Nintendo Land, I think it's hard to argue that that game isn't the better holistic experience comparatively to Daytona. Fine racing yeah, Daytona, game. It was we fun. We love our Sega yeah. Saturn. But man, Nintendo, Nintendo Land, I personally, and this is, you know, getting into maybe another game that's going to be in the tournament, but I, I like the game better than Wii Sports, and everybody loves Wii Sports. Nintendo Land is awesome. I'm comfortable with Nintendo Land moving on. I think Nintendo Land has to move on, and it's going to be hard. I know there's a bunch of other games we haven't talked about, but I think Nintendo Land is going to be hard to beat just because of what it did for the Wii U. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. it didn't do that much because <laughs> the Wii U failed. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. It was that perfect tech demo. It really really introduced what you can do on the console. So, okay, first matchup is in the bag. Nintendo Land dropping the elbow off the top rope on Daytona for the Sega Saturn. Now we get into two consoles that we play on the reg. Yes. I mean, we play the Wii and the PS2 all the time. Those are like some of our favorite consoles. Yeah, and we're looking here at Twilight Princess, Zelda, obviously, a household name against Tech and Tag. I think we just gotta uh, pull back the curtain and take a look at these contenders. The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess was originally planned to be a GameCube exclusive, but due to some delays, it lined up perfectly to be a launch title for Nintendo's new console, the Nintendo Wii. Released exclusively as a launch title for the Nintendo Wii in November of 2006, the game did see a subsequent release for the Nintendo GameCube in December of that same year and it ended up being the last first party released on the console. The game was received pretty well at the time as it was the highest selling Zelda game until Breath of the Wild knocked its socks off. Many at the time though felt that the Wii version's motion controls felt tacked on and gimmicky. Does this title have what it takes to move on? in launch title madness. Tekken Tag Tournament was originally released as an arcade game in 1999, but in the year 2000, it became a launch title for the PlayStation 2. The PlayStation 2 version had updated graphics and slight differences from the arcade version, but it's very similar. Tekken Tag Tournament received positive reviews and is still played by many today, but can it stand on its own in launch title madness? Let's find out. All right, what what a battle here. Yeah, this um, is this, this is, is tough. This is really tough. I uh, look at Twilight Princess. It's a really good Zelda game. But but you know, I don't know that it's even the best version of itself. No, it's not. A lot of hardcore gamers would have rather played this game on the GameCube. Well, I'm pretty sure it was originally developed for the GameCube, but then they, they yeah. put pause on it so then they could launch it for the Wii, but then they also released it for the GameCube. Now, we own it on the Wii. It's a great game yes. on the Wii. Man, does a, it... A lot of people aren't a fan of the motion controls. It It's tough because I'm trying to like think in the launch realm, yeah, just, right? just for launching. But I'm also thinking about what game are we most likely to play right now, and then... I'm looking at Tekken Tag, which Ooh, which we're not big fighting game fans. Tekken Tag is it's hard to argue that that isn't the best PlayStation 2 launch title. It's it's definitely up there. Amazing game that still is one of the better entries in the franchise. And it looks great. And I feel like just what your mind wants to go to, most people are going to say, well, uh, Zelda's got to win. Yeah. But man, Tekken Tag, I feel like that's kind of the uh, dark horse in this race and. Twilight Princess is a great game, but on the Wii, I think Tekken Tag on the PS2 is better than Twilight Princess on, on the, the Wii. Wii. Yes, now, you, gotta, it, you gotta be specific because if, I would, I'm, if I'm gonna play Twilight Princess, you know what I'm gonna play it on? The Wii U. Or the GameCube. Because we have the remastered yeah. version. Dude, it's I it's it's good on the Wii. Yeah. But it's tough because- It's I'm, not great. And Tekken Tag's great. But I'm not a huge fighting game fan too either so this is such a tough battle but the like, tag element brought in a oh, whole new twist of yeah, yeah four player and i just if it was twilight princess on the gamecube i would it'd pick be, twilight it would princess. be a different story yes but on the wii because it was so like shackled with the motion controls dude this is gonna be this is probably gonna piss some people yeah, off it's the first episode. but we're dealing with the nintendo wii version yes, of you gotta, twilight you princess remember that let's yes. keep that in mind with because you mentioned the game, or you mentioned the Wii U, yeah. I've mentioned the GameCube. I would pick that version over Tekken Tag. I will not pick 
the Twilight Princess version on the Nintendo I Wii. I think the over Nintendo Tech Tech. Wii launch title version of Twilight Princess is the worst version of Twilight Princess. There's so many other versions, it's, and it's a lot. I think it's title. a valid point. Can we move? Can we move to a final verdict? Tekken tag on the PS2. I know people are like, but it's Zelda. But also, we made a lot of good points. I so. think it's the worst version of the game. You already yeah. said that. I think that is a great point. I'm not saying it's a bad game, though. What's a great game? People were getting into the Wii probably most likely because of Wii Sports. I don't know how much of a system seller Twilight Princess is in all its glory. Fantastic game. But I feel comfortable. I, I feel good about picking Tekken Tag. Yeah, here. I really do. Tekken Tag. You guys can let us know in the comments below how you feel about that pick, but I I, I really think the Wii version of Twilight Princess yes. is an inferior launch title to Tekken Tag. I Tekken really feel that way. Badass, multi-tap. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm happy with this decision. Yeah. Tekken Tag, Nintendo Land, move on yep. to the next round. So what's very unique about this bracket is there's 17 fights because yeah. there's an odd amount so this is kind of like the preliminary round yes so now these two games are moving into like technically round one yes so yes. if you're a fan of march madness you understand and this is taking place in march so yeah so moving on is nintendo land which will actually be in the next episode of yes. console madness because that gets us into the actual bracket yes. and it will be taking on fusion frenzy Ooh, two party games yes Ooh, that's gonna party be game there's just party games. It's going to be one hell of a match. <laughs> and then Tech and Tag gets a little bit of a breather. We're going to talk about Tech and Tag again for quite some time, yeah. but we're going to see Sonic Adventure from the Dreamcast up against Excite Bike. Oh my. So God. get hyped. This is going to be a really fun series. I'm excited. I'm so excited for this series, guys. I think we might have ruffled some feathers with the Tech and Tag pick, but hey, we let you guys pick the games. Yes. And then it's. So you got to let us pick the results. It's up to us. Yeah. To piss you off. Yeah, this beer. Uh, so what do you think of this? This is a new brewery that. From Iowa that I've never yeah. had before. This is the Charles Figgins. It's a patient <laughs> porter. Funny name. This is from Gazellig Brewing Company from Newton, Iowa. Yeah. Um, which is uh, pretty cool. It's pastry. It's supposed to have cocoa nibs, um, caramel, kind of tastes like a pastry ish like, beer. Like Dessert a, beer. Like a, like a what sweetness I'm from that. Um, this isn't a bad porter, but I don't understand the flavor profile uh, as far as delivering on the, the, Pastry. the ex explanation of yes. what it is middle of the road porter it's not unenjoyable i like it this is not a great brew no i was i was very excited because i love pastry styled beers mm -hmm. i love that sweetness this does the more it sits there is a slight sweetness that's coming out yeah very slight if this was just called a porter yeah i'd be like wow this is this is a pretty good porter you yeah. delivered on that name but pastry porter uh, you gotta bring kinda, more to the table. Yeah, it's it's very falling short, and it sucks because this is a new brewery, at least yeah. to my knowledge. I am enjoying this. This, this is good. Yeah. And it's 8%, and it doesn't taste like it's 8%, so it's a dangerous, easy drinking beer. It's just kind of disappointing. Yeah. Just like our results of Tekken Tekken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I totally, uh, we're, I think we're on the same page here. It's middle of the road porter. Doesn't really deliver on what it says. But it's an okay brew. I'm not like not enjoying it. It's yep. fine. But uh, you get a very faint little bit of a caramel ish yeah, on the finish. But it's very, it's very buried. buried in there. And if you don't know what you're looking for, you probably wouldn't pick it out. Um, but anyway, episode one of Launch Title Madness is in the books. We will leave a link to the playlist in the description below for Console Madness. Yes. If you want to get caught up on this whole thing, because this is season two of the Madness series, which is one of my favorite miniseries that we've yeah. started it's just it's so hard because we don't know we just jump in we don't talk about it beforehand yeah no it's all raw everything you guys are seeing is just our our initial opinions we don't research it we random generate the bracket and we just jump in and hip fire Dude, on this thing it gets which makes it fun i remember console launch madness yeah or console madness i was stressing out especially when it got to the final rounds so i was like yep. this is impossible yeah it's it's gonna be fun it's gonna be wild there's a lot of good launch titles there's some dog shit launch titles but you guys pick the winners which makes this fun because you have some skin in the game is the horse you put your chips on gonna be the last horse standing in the stable you're gonna have to stay tuned for the next episode of launch title madness right here on gaming off the grid in 1995, Brett Favre broke all sorts of NS NFL passing records and was named the NFL's most valuable player. And then Brett Favre's like, in 1995, when I was named the NFL's most valuable player, is one of the greatest honors you could ever achieve. It's unbelievable. Just give her a give her a whirl. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Okay. 
Apparently get much there. Just tastes like a porter. Yeah. <clears throat> Things are about ready to get rowdy. It's about ready to get. Fasten your seatbelts, ladies and gents. Uh.